Let me start with what is liberalism. There are two bedrock assumptions that underpin liberalism. One is that it's individualistic at its core. And number two is that there are real limits to what we can do with our critical faculties to reach agreement on first principles or questions about the good life. Now, what exactly am I saying? You have to decide when you think about politics whether you think human beings are first and foremost individuals who form social contracts or you think that human beings are fundamentally social animals who carve out room for their individualism. Okay? This is very, very important to think about. Right? Liberalism is all about individualism. Liberal theorists are known as social contract theorists because they believe that individuals come together and form social contracts. So the focus is on the individual. The assumption underpinning liberalism is not that human beings are social animals from the get-go. That's the first point. The second point is that liberalism assumes that we cannot use our critical faculties. We cannot use reason to come up with truth about first principles. Think about issues like abortion, affirmative action. You cannot get universal agreement on those issues. Right? And I'll talk about this more as we go along, but the roots of liberalism are traced back in my opinion, to the religious wars in Britain between Catholics and Protestants. And the fact is, you cannot use your critical faculties to determine whether Catholicism is a superior religion to Protestantism, or vice versa, or whether atheism is superior to both of them, or Judaism or Islam is superior to Catholicism and Protestantism. Who knows? Right? You just can't reach agreement. There are real limits to what we can do with our critical faculties. Okay, so these are the two bedrock assumptions. One, you focus on the individual, and number two, you accept the fact that you can't reach universal agreement. Now, central question, how should politics be arranged to deal with this potential for violence? And you say to yourself, what does he mean, potential for violence? The fact is that Catholics and Protestants were killing each other in huge numbers, not only in Britain, but all over Europe. People today, Shias and Sunnis, kill each other because they can't agree on whether Shiism or Sunnism is the correct interpretation of Islam. Or communists versus liberals. People can't agree on first principles. And when they can't agree on first principles, if they feel really strongly about them, there is potential for violence. So when you have all these individuals running around who don't agree, they may agree in some cases, but don't universally agree, there's tremendous potential for violence. So liberalism is basically an ideology that's based on conflict. And the question is, how do you solve that conflict? There's a three-part solution, and this should be dear to all of your hearts. The first is you focus on individual rights. Remember the importance of the individual. You know the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are natural rights. Those are inalienable rights. This means that every person on the planet has a particular set of rights, sometimes defined as freedoms. This is to say, you, if you want to be a Protestant, have the right to practice that religion. And if I want to be a Catholic, I have the freedom, I have the right to be a Catholic. The name of the game is to recognize that everybody has these freedoms to choose. This makes perfect sense when you think about Catholics killing Protestants. Right? or Jews killing Muslims, or whatever group you want. Atheists killing believers. Communists killing whatever. Right? The, the point is, 
You want to focus on the individual and let the individual choose for him or herself what kind of life they want to lead. You want to let them lead, as much as possible, their version of the good life. And very important, every person on the planet has that right. And let me get ahead of myself here. Just put this seed in your brain. If you focus on individualism and inalienable rights, you go almost automatically from an individualistic ideology to a universalistic ideology. Right? Because again, you're focusing on the individual, you're saying every individual has a set of rights, every individual on the planet, that individualistic ideology becomes a universalistic ideology. But we're talking about the individual here. The second is you purvey the norm of tolerance. We talk about tolerance all the time. Universities are really big on tolerance. We're supposed to tolerate opinions that we don't like. You bring in speakers or you allow speakers to come in who say things that you find reprehensible. Tolerance really matters. But the fact is that tolerance only takes you so far because you're dealing with people who sometimes are so committed to their beliefs. You know, somebody who believes that abortion is murder is willing to murder a doctor who practices abortion, right? So you need a state. That's the third element of the equation. You need a state that's effectively a night watchman that make sure that those people over there who want to live as Protestants don't attack those people who want to live as Catholics or vice versa. This is the liberal solution. This is what America is all about. Individualism, we talk about it all the time. We talk about rights. Everybody has rights. My kids over the years have always reminded me when I tell them that they have to do X, Y, and Z that they have rights. And I cannot interfere with their rights. Right? That's the way we're educated from the get-go. And of course, we're remarkably tolerant people as societies go. Not completely, but that's of course why we have a state. Right? You gotta have a police force, you gotta have a system of courts. Right? So that's that's what liberalism is all about, right? Liberalism focuses on the individual, right, pervades the norm of tolerance and accepts the fact that you need a night watchman's